In this video, I'm going to compare the Dune movies, in this case, the original 1984 movie with both of the remakes. There will be spoilers, you've been warned. Although, I would suggest giving the remakes a miss, as you'll see why as we progress. So, Dune, who did it better? I'll start with the remake on this video. Now, I mean, where do I begin with this colossal mess? At the moment, there are two movies in the remake edition. They are extremely long. Apparently, there is a part three of Dune in the making, and I'm not even going to bother watching that. I can't be bothered with that. I'm fed up with the remakes already. Usually, a good movie would have memorable moments you enjoyed that stays with you. These two Dune remakes have nothing going for them. There isn't a single moment that caught my interest. These two movies are such a drag. By the time the movie ends, I felt exhausted. You know, I actually felt glad that it was over rather than having the feeling of being entertained. Dune Part 1 is a slow build-up. Dune Part 2 is a long, slow payoff, sadly anticlimactic. Everything about the remake is wrong. It doesn't look right. The casting is wrong, the music doesn't match the atmosphere, the art direction is missing any passion, it lacks creativity, it makes the whole thing look boring, even the knife fight at the end was dumb, it was absurd and laughable. Let's have a look at the music. The, the original has a distinctive theme tune, it gives you a sense of an adventure with an approaching danger. You can almost feel the heat of the desert. It stays with you forever. The music in the intro is enough to get you pumped up for an epic sci-fi movie. The combination of classical music and rock music makes it feel more intense. It's that good. While we are on the subject of music, there is another track that deserves an honorable mention. The Prophecy theme. To this day, it's still one of the best tracks ever made. It has that feeling of the vastness of the universe. It captures the mystery and the horror of space. And at the same time, it is soothing. It's mysterious and beautiful. I recommend you go and listen to it and you'll see what I mean. The prophecy theme. Some people to this day still use the prophecy tune as meditation background music. It's that good. Now, regarding the remakes, look, don't get me wrong, I'm a Hans Zimmer fan. I generally like his soundtracks, from Gladiator to The Dark Knight, but this doesn't do it for me. He couldn't manage the Blade Runner 2049 sequel because he cannot top Vangelis' atmospheric feel. If I had to choose who should have done the music for the Dune remake, I think it should be David Arnold, who did Star Stargate. While we are at it, who says it can't be video game composers? Mass Effect 2, we can hire Jack Wall. From Deus Ex Human Revolution, Michael McCain, or Michael McCann, or whichever you prefer. They would have done a much better soundtrack, in my opinion. Anyway, that's all I have to say about the music. The most iconic thing about Dune are the sandworms. They are the first thing that comes to mind when Dune is mentioned. So which worms look cool? Once again, the sandworms in the original Dune look the best. The three-part mouth looks like a giant menacing flower, while the worms in the remake, they just look like dirty old pipes. They just don't look threatening to me. What I found ridiculous in the Dune remake is how they got a whole load of people with a canopy on the back of a sandworm. It doesn't make sense to me. The one negative thing I have to say about the original is that the CGI of the shields during the knife fight in the beginning is bad. I mean, this was the 1980s. They could have used a different animation technique. Instead, they used 3D blocks where I could barely see what they were doing. I mean, they could have just used 2D animation that they could have just drawn on top of them or rotoscoped something. I don't know. Anything would have been better. Regardless, the original Dune movie still stands on top of the remakes. Now for the casting. Let's take a look at some of the characters and see who portrayed whom better.
Paul Atreides, aka Muad'Dib. The original is better. Kyle McLachlan, I think that's the right way to pronounce the name, his portrayal is the best of the two. I understand that in the book, if I remember correctly, that Paul Atreides is supposed to be 15 years old. But let's be real, nobody wants to take orders from a 15 year old kid. I mean, it's hard to take, it's hard for an army to take orders from a kid with no combat experience seriously. So I think the casting of a man is a lot more fitting. His acting is better, his internal monologues in the original pulls you in to his state of mind which makes you want to empathise with him. The Paul in the remake, however, is too young, he's too skinny, he's not intimidating at all, he has no presence, there's, no, there's nothing imposing about him. It's hard to take him seriously, he's bland and boring to look at. He just looks out of place here. He's better off acting of acting in some teenage sitcom, not in some sci-fi epic. That's why I think it is very important to get the casting of the main character of a film right, because if it's bad, then the rest of the film goes down with them. No amount of best supporting actors is going to save a bad casting decision. Duke Leto Atreides. In the original, Jürgen Prochnow, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Anyway, he does the portrayal of the Duke very well. You can feel the fear and the anxiety he's going through. You feel how vengeful he is once he discovers that he's been betrayed. So when he dies, you feel bad for him. Unlike the remake, there is no emotion coming from the actor. Because this actor sucks. Oscar Isaac sucks as an actor in general. He doesn't care about the role he's meant to play. You don't feel emotionally invested in him. So when he dies, you just don't care. Given how long the remake is, you actually feel glad that he's gone because it's just one less boring character to put up with. Lady Jessica, Paul's mother. In the remake, she is the only character who I actually liked. There is a lot more depth to the mother character. You can feel her anxiety building up, her anger, her rage, her fear and her determination, her overprotectiveness over Paul, all of them well acted. In the original, however, she doesn't do much except for the telepathic voice commands that are very well done. Other than that, she wasn't given much to work with. So yes, in this instance, the remake makes up for what the original lacked. In the remake, we do get a feeling of the overprotective concubine mother. It would have been a lot more effective if the pacing of the movie wasn't so slow. But then again, in the remake, this Lady Jessica is superb. The Padishah Emperor for Shaddam IV. When it comes to the Padishah Emperor, in the remake, Christopher Walken has no depth at all. You just don't feel the pressure he is under. At least in the original, you can feel the Padishah Emperor's reluctance in complying with the guild and sending the Atreides family to manage Arrakis knowing full well they are going to be slaughtered. You can see it in his face and hear it in his voice again. The original actor is a lot better than the one in the remake. It just goes to show how even casting decisions for minor characters was, was very well done for the 1984 movie. Meanwhile, the casting decisions for the remakes were just careless. Princess Irulan. The original begins with a beautiful princess telling us a story. She gives us a brief summary of the background and sets us up for the story. And then the film shows us the title sequences with epic music. All of this is just another layer of carefully crafted charm in the original movie. The remake has none of it. The princess in the original is a lot better. She is beautiful. No one can beat the beauty of Virginia Madsen. The princess in the remake, however, comes across boring as if she doesn't want to be there. Again, the remake has no depth. I mean, take a look at the costumes. The blonde beauty in the Dune original looks a lot more like a princess than the one in the remake. In the original, she actually looks like a princess. In the remake, she's covered in chainmail. She doesn't look like a princess. And yet we are meant to believe that this is the prize that Paul wins in the end. Forget it. The original triumphs. Now let's take a look at the Harkonnens. In the original 1984 version, there are a bunch of guys with fiery red hair who wear a distinctive blue colour for their costumes who like to wreak havoc. 
it's an interesting color scheme. In the remake, there are a bunch of pale bald guys who wear black and they are boring and lack presence. The Baron in the original is a loud sickly maniac, but in the remake, he's just a bald fat man. Again, boring. Fayid Harkonnen, Sting is brilliant in the original. He plays a good villain and you can tell he had fun playing this role. The ideal rival to Paul, he played a good antagonist. In the remake, however, Fayid is just another pale bald guy in dark clothing. No passion, no feeling. The feeling of hatred is not even there. He just looks like a spoilt brat. They have no vibe at all. They don't even feel like villains. And finally, Chani or Chaney, the love interest for Paul. For me, Chaney is more is boring throughout both movies. In fact, I don't like either of them. This is a forced love story that both movies could do without. But it is what it is. She's a character in the book, so she has to be in the movies. At least in the original version of Dune, we've got a girl who is pale. But then that doesn't make sense for a girl who lives on a desert planet. She should at least be tanned. At least she looks cute. They could have hired an Arab girl instead. For her, there is no character development. Despite the original movie being the length that it is, at least there is some level of intimacy between her and Paul, which is quite good. But with the remake, however, I mean, this Cheney was insufferable. Zendaya, or Zendaya, I don't know how you pronounce her name, but this this actress is boring. She's insufferable, okay? She got on my nerves throughout most of, most of the time. In the remake, the Cheney character she plays is so bossy towards Paul, the character who's supposed to be, you know, the Messiah's lover, and yet she treats him like shit most of the time. There is no chemistry between her and Paul. Despite the remakes being longer, there is no development of a relationship between the two. Again, another failure, once again, the original is a lot better than the remake. When all this comes together, the remake is awful. As I mentioned earlier, this Dune remake is a colossal mess. Overall, the remake should have been one long film with an intermission halfway through, or better yet, a TV series. Some of you may be wondering what I think about the TV series that was aired in the year 2000. Yes, even that three-part TV series is way better than the remake. The effects are good, the CGI is a bit dated and low budget, but it's still better. The acting is good, the casting is good, the art direction of the scenery is good. But I thought the costumes were ridiculous. I mean, why does Fade have a kite on his back? Why do the Bene Gesserit sisterhood have big white butterflies on their heads? Nah, they look stupid. At least the length of each episode was reasonable. Three episodes, each of them one hour and a half long, which is perfectly fine with me. It told the story at a good pace from start to finish. So if you want a good TV series to watch, yeah, I recommend that. So, which is better? David Lynch's 1984 Dune movie, the original, or the 2021 and the 2022 Dune remake part one and part two? Of course, David Lynch's 1984 movie is the best one, okay? That is awesome. To me, this version is the best version of Dune. Despite the limited budget and the massive scale of the Dune universe with a lot to cover, overall, he pulled it off really well. So I say go and watch the Dune original. Watch it. While we are on the subject of what's good, I'd say watch the mini-series I mentioned earlier. It's entertaining and fills you in on the Dune universe without you having to read the book. Now, as for the remakes, don't watch it. Avoid them at all costs. You can just watch the original Dune movie and have fun with it. So, the final verdict, the remakes, Dune Part 1 and Part 2, don't watch it. My verdict for Dune, the original 1984 movie, Watch it. For those of you who have come this far in my comparison video, thank you for watching. Take good care of yourselves.